Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video we're going to look at Newton's third law, so let's get started. Now we've already seen Newton's first and second laws of motion in previous theory videos, but this time we're going to look at Newton's third law, and this is probably the one that's most commonly known among the general population. Now a fancy way to state Newton's third law is to think about two objects A and B, which could be say two boxes for example, and it says that if an object A exerts a force on object B, then B exerts an equal but opposite force on object A. Now as I said, this is a fancy way of stating it, but you don't need to remember it like this if you don't want to. The alternative way to state it is that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction, and this is maybe the way you've heard Newton's third law being stated before. It then says the action and reaction forces are sometimes called Newton pairs. And we will look at lots of examples of Newton pairs shortly, and then it says to note the two forces do not act on the same object. We're now going to revisit seat belts in terms of Newton's third law, but as it says here, we have already seen how Newton's first law explains the need for seat belts in vehicles. However, Newton's third law can also be used to explain exactly how seat belts work. We're going to think about this in terms of the two forces, action and reaction forces. So the action force, we can say is when a car crashes, the driver moves against the seat belt, exerting a force on it. So that would be this arrow here in our picture, the force of the driver on the seat belt. However, the reaction force would be that the seat belt locks in place and then exerts a force back on the driver, causing them to decelerate in a controlled way. And that's shown by this arrow here. So we've got the force of the seat belt back on the driver. Now a top tip when thinking about Newton pairs is to just reorder the words. So if we've got force of driver on seat belt here, then we're going to just swap the order of some of the words to get the reaction force. So instead of saying the force of the driver on the seat belt, we could say the force of the seat belt on the driver. So we've literally just swapped the words driver and seat belt around there. And this trick usually works for lots of situations involving Newton's third law. Next we have another example of Newton's third law which is balloons and how they move. So it says the movement of a balloon can be explained using Newton's third law. So once you've blown up the balloon and it's got air inside it, you could say the action force is that the balloon pushes the air inside of it, to the left in this case, onto the air outside of it. And the reaction force is then that the air pushes back onto the balloon. And that's going to be to the right in this case, causing the balloon to move. So in the picture here we've got the balloon that pushes the air outside of the balloon itself, and the air then pushes back onto the balloon. And that's our Newton pair of forces for balloons. Our last main example of Newton's third law that we'll look at in more detail before we look at some other examples is a rocket launch. So it says the launch of a rocket can be explained using Newton's third law. In actual fact, you could use all of Newton's laws to explain the launch of a rocket. Now for a rocket launch, the action and reaction forces are things that pupils often get wrong. And that's because they can often get mixed up with what is causing the actual forces. So we say that for this rocket here, the action force is that the rocket motors push the hot gases downwards. So the action force is that the rocket itself is pushing out hot gases downwards. So it sounds a bit strange, but we could word this as the force of the rocket on the hot gases. It's pushing out those hot gases. And then we can just swap the words around to say that the reaction force will be that the hot gases push back on the rocket, causing it to move upwards. So there's our arrow showing the force back onto the rocket from the hot gases. Now a common thing that pupils get wrong here is that they think the action force is due to the hot gases pushing against the ground. But if you think about it, remember once the rocket has actually been launched, it's not going to be anywhere near the ground. But these forces will still exist. So we don't want to mention the ground at any point here. We want to talk about the rocket pushing out the hot gases and the hot gases pushing back on the rocket itself. There's no mention of the ground in this case. It then says Newton's second law explains why the rocket eventually moves upwards. When the reaction force, i.e. the thrust, Thrust, that's this upwards arrow here, is greater than the weight of the rocket, it will have an unbalanced force upwards and therefore accelerate upwards. And we could also think about Newton's first law before the rockets actually started moving, because remember Newton's first law says that an object will remain at rest or travel at a constant speed in a straight line unless acted on by an unbalanced force. So if there's no unbalanced forces acting on the rocket to begin with, then it's going to remain stationary. Now I'm just going to show you a quick simulation to help you understand the rocket launch. So here's our rocket simulation and to begin with we're going to click fire there and you'll see the rocket just stays put. So why is that? Well it says the rocket does not move. This is because this rocket motor cannot provide sufficient thrust to overcome the force of gravity. Then says the rocket motor has been replaced with a larger one. Try firing the motor again. So here we go. This time you'll see the rocket has launched from the surface of the earth. And that's because the rocket motor now applies a greater force, i.e. a thrust. This force is greater than the weight of the rocket and there is now an unbalanced force in the upwards direction. The rocket accelerates. So remember that's Newton's second law at play there. Then says to notice that the rocket motor pushes the exhaust out of the rear of the motor 
In terms of Newton's third law, this is the action force. The reaction force is that the exhaust pushes the rocket in the opposite direction, i.e. upwards. And we just saw this when thinking about Newton's third law, the action and reaction forces. And lastly, it says an important point based on what I was just talking about. So it says the rocket motor exhaust does not need to push against anything to make the rocket move. It is common to think that the exhaust pushes against the ground, explaining why the rocket moves. This is not true. The action-reaction happens even in the vacuum of space. So that just confirms what I was talking about earlier. Don't mention the ground when talking about the action and reaction forces of a rocket. Going back to the notes now, we're going to look at some other examples of Newton pairs that exist, but there are so many examples in addition to the ones we're going to look at. So here we have a cannon with a cannonball, and it says the cannon fires the cannonball to the right, that's our action force, and then our reaction force would be that the cannonball forces the cannon back to the left. Over here with our foot on the football, we've got the force of the foot on the ball, that's our action force, and then the reaction force is the force of the ball back on the foot. We've then got this one, which is a swimmer pushing water to the right, that's the action force, and the water is then going to push back on the swimmer to the left, causing them to move. And over here we've got a skateboarder next to a wall, so the skateboarder pushes the wall to the left, that's the action force, and then the reaction force is that the wall pushes the skateboarder to the right. Now I'm just going to show you some quick simulations of other examples. So here's our balloon example. So we have that the balloon exerts a force in the air, and then the reaction, the air exerts a force on the balloon. So there's our balloon moving because of Newton's third law. Another example is this one here. So we've got a tractor and a trailer. So it says the tractor exerts a force on the trailer, and the trailer exerts a force back on the tractor. So we can click play just to show you that in motion. The next example we have is that the tennis racket exerts a force on the ball, and the ball exerts a force on the racket. And lastly we have Jupiter and one of its moons Io. So we have Jupiter exerts a force on Io, and Io exerts a force back on Jupiter. And that allows it to stay in orbit. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.